it's me, Cross Kyoko. I'm back again to do another video. This time I thought I'd show you my temporary toy room setup. Uh, like I've been saying before, in this move, uh, I have to pause before I can fully set everything up until my family has the other house uh, available to them to move half the stuff and do it. And then you'll see that my toy displays work just in the studio, but also in the living room as well, because I'll have room to spread out. I mean, we're gonna have some big vehicles on the way. I need space. But in the meantime, I have carefully unpacked all, almost all my classified collection. I am still trying to find little bits and accessories and all the little parts to finish putting things like glasses back on Ripper or Buzzer, uh, Zartan's little monkey paw back. They're all little back in little storage boxes. It's been fun trying to track them all down, but this move I knew wouldn't be kind and as organized as I was, the movers were not. <laughs> um, so I thought, it's been a couple of weeks uh, of me putting the shelving in there, working a bed into there afterwards when I realized I had no room for a bed uh, and to accommodate everybody. And then finally getting some scenery in there. Now it's by no means what I pictured. It's by no means what I uh, plan on once I'm fully spread out, but it's the framework of what you're going to see with some of these displays. So what you'll see is my entire classified collection and a lot of other figures in there, including a lot of my customs, like my end state stuff and my other Canadian Joes, uh, some Valor, some Marvel, other things, uh, even some NECA make their way into there. So uh, it's just a fun little thing and it's all set up with the the brain cannon, right? So you'll see areas of Baffin Island, Wolf Island, all northern areas that you guys probably don't even know about. But uh, the, the polar regions of the north and, and the border water regions between Canada and the US. And then, you know, the, the jungles of Florida, just for shits and giggles. And other areas on my shelf that I tried to reflect, uh, just all part of that brain cannon. And uh, you'll see some characters that go, who is that? And it's just probably somebody that I whipped off and you never saw me do a video on. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy it. I'll probably break it up into a couple of parts. And, uh, yeah, uh, more shelving to come as we go, as you'll see, with this very cluttered toy room tour. I hope you like it. Well, and before we go in, I should also mention, you're also going to see stuff that I'm working on that I haven't been talking about. So, you call them Easter eggs or cameos. Some projects that... Uh, if you haven't been tuning into live, so I haven't been noticing them in the background, you're gonna see them worked into these displays. And uh, I'll probably do a voiceover or something to explain some of that. So, could be an interesting video for you guys. But let's head inside. Well, first you gotta make your way through the labyrinth of boxes left to be unpacked yet in the garage to get to the secret garage door entrance that almost nobody knows about. When you come in, you'll notice two things uh, that denote that you're coming into my uh, crusty old crow country studio. And the first is this picture that uh, my wife gave me there just as we were moving in. She had picked that up in Montreal. I thought that was a nice little thing to have. And the second was an stop, which is an old crow. So there you go, guys. Let's go into the studio and see what's going on. This will be all right. Ah, such a terrible place. All right, guys, right off the bat, you can see so much clutter. But here we are. I can't even close the door right now. And I'm going to do a little video explaining what you're seeing in here. So, hmm. I hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said, um, I can answer questions in the comments, but I can't answer all questions. Uh, and like I said, you'll see some projects I'm working on and some that uh, you haven't seen before. Okay, bye. So we'll kick this off with my Cobra collection and then we'll do the Joes. Here's all the clippings that you saw in a previous video. This is what I do with the box art. I just try and retain it for a while in some other form, not necessarily keeping the boxes because it takes up a lot of space, doesn't it guys? And this first set is my winter set. So you'll start to see the snow caps as I just kind of show these pictures. I really do like that box art, but we're gonna scroll down and start seeing the effects of the winter cap. You can see my owl tipped over, God damn it. But this whole set just kind of revolves around first snow job, 
uh, discovering what's going on in the Baffin Island region as Cobra tracks down something they've been looking at. Uh, but low lights there as well, my custom low light winter guy. And what they've tracked down, of course, is what you see in the uh, little alluded to. The whole Cobra group has hunted down the, uh, I was once a man, Cobra commander who's been trying to get away. But this is a different take on it, right? They've all surrounded it. They'll bring them back to Mindbender's lab, of course. So in this scene, you've got my custom shadow tracker, Winter Variant, and Bat 222, an Arctic Bat. I did up to partner with them. A pair of Stinger drivers, and of course that Stinger, Storm Shadow, uh, the Retro Variant. Uh, a piece of the I Was Once a Man Cobra Commander Deluxe set. Of course, he was the complaining snake himself. Uh, to the left of that, <laughs> he gets knocked down. That's fine. I'll send him back up. You stupid Cobra Commander, get up. Uh, to the left of that was the NECA uh, Turtles uh, Sindar Syndicate Troop that I had gotten. But for the next part of this, uh, it's important to know that it was more inspired to the... Uh, Cabin in the Woods movie, which if you haven't seen, is one of my favorite movies and really what drives the uh, the next set. I didn't mention this, the other uh, snow serpents and bats in that scene, but there was a flight pod in there as well. But this movie, if you guys don't have never seen it, Cabin in the Woods is one of my favorites. It's Joss Whedon's love letter, the horror film genre and all its stereotypes. And it's just a beautifully written little piece of uh, horror adventure comedy everything i've ever wanted in a horror movie so um i pretty much tribute my entire mindbender shelf towards joss whedon and the movie a cabin in the woods where you learn the sinister groups that corrupt that actually manipulate the supernatural and where the old gods lay how our modern society knew would never know how japan failed how america failed and therefore the, the end of the world was damned but on this one so one of these labs from the movie is actually on baffin island but of course i do recommend you see the movie if you haven't if you want to see every horror unleashed on man that you could ever think of every monster from every movie they put them in here and they do it in such a great way it was so inspiring and of course they have almost a preternatural love for everything that we've seen in horror toys as well so the whole concept worked very good for my shelf i thought and of course, I like to think of my shop as a more grim take on things like the I was once a man Cobra Commander situation and the kind of menacing experimentation that a guy like Dr. Mindbender would be doing uh, in a lab. And I also, I took the cubes idea from the, uh, from the movie Cabin in the Woods and incorporated it here where, you know, they watch the transportation and transformation and he becomes one of many different monstrosities under Mindbender's control now. And yep, that's a Buzz Lightyear character in the background guarding them. Uh, there's Cobra Commander. This desk was provided to me by Turkish Murphy. I've added things to it. Uh, it broke up when I was transporting it back from Georgia, but I managed to get back together, and I can't thank him enough for that. And you can see my little crow added on there. But I use it to display a lot of things. Thank you so much for this a beautiful desk, Turkish Murphy. It really helps the scene a lot. And it really became the driving force behind the set because it gave me places to stick all Mindbender's experimental kit and all the other things. Ooh, that shield just moved, right? Uh, and then that got me to buy more 3D printed pieces, although the desk wasn't 3D printed. He made that by hand using polystyrene. so... Uh, other 3D printed pieces include this computer panel and, of course, the panel of pipes and everything that was behind the glow cube. Not those dog dishes, of course. That's for Mindbender's pup. Uh, my Mindbender in the review still isn't done, but man, do I ever want to get to it. But I wanted to get his lab done first. What other things is he experimenting on that they're all looking at? This terror of a, of a dorm there's something wrong with this book and so it ties into some of the lore of what uh what the dark energon act what actually summoned dark energon there what was dark energon running from what destroyed the place like cybertron where that dark energon all ended up on earth uh find that's a gateway drug to a lot of lore questioning and one of the lores i really enjoy is things like an eye of terror concept um uh, and Wraith Mace, if he's watching, he could tell you all about the warp, the Eye of Terror, and the, you know, the chaos 
and what it could open up if, a, if the eye of terror ever came to another world and saw that it could consume and corrupt the way it did. And uh, maybe that's what happened to Cybertron. And maybe pieces of Cybertron came to this world of Joe, uh, this end state world. And maybe Megatron is just one source of a relic that uh, we've seen in Skybound comics and very similarly in my shelf where certain technologies start going up. Like maybe the bats have been... Bats have been more advanced since we've uh, found these things, but you can see kind of where the Mindbender Lab and the cubes and all the monstrosities and ideas just kind of go for a creative excuse to just build whatever the fuck I want and slip it in wherever I want. That's really all this display is about, but uh, I still haven't done a review on uh, Once a Man Cobra Commander yet either. Oh well, Dark Energon all that stuff so there's the uh the book effects you know i gave that little energy cell effect so i could switch whatever i wanted in here maybe i wanted a different character in here maybe i wanted to make it a prison but for this one i wanted a a uh, a book that suddenly burst into magical energy and killed the people inside of it with no warning whatsoever so shields up there you go so that was the kind of the effect uh we went with that and little stone room again this is all underground underneath baffin island right and uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. So the Mindbender Lab is, uh, that's pretty much it. The little accessories I've got, again, some of them come from Michael's, like the palm reading. That's to represent the, uh, the mysticism and the mystic arts, like the Nazis were looking into, uh, or Hydra and things like that. Uh, why should Mindbender be any different? Why shouldn't he explore every avenue of knowledge and corrupt power, right? So, and why wouldn't Cobra Commander want him to? Well, maybe not the Cobra Commander in the glass cage right now, but the the hooded Cobra Commander I have. So, I think that's enough of the Mindbender and Turk Murphy's amazing desk. We're gonna roll things right along now and uh, get ready for the next one. And of course, if you like these kind of videos, you know the drill, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, it helps. There, I got that awkward piece of work out of the way. I usually forget to do that till the very end. So here we've got the uh, the vehicle, loading bay, whatever. We got a little forklift toting around, scrap irons, extra missiles. Firefly acting like he owns the joint and bearing blood. Major blood to him. You really don't. We've got the 788 troops all squadding up and the regular blue troops, uh, you know, first battalion all squadding up. Baroness and the Destro there hanging out in the turret of the... Uh, the hiss, which is just running through its system checks and uh, getting checked out by the Techno Viper while Scrap Iron checks out the new drone attachments of the double Gatling gun supplied to us by Aaron the Toy Enhancer and his 3D printer. Thank you again for that, Aaron. I love that thing. Uh, so yeah, I don't have many Vipers, so I guess I'll have to pick up a few retro Vipers on the way. Uh, but I made it so that this thing lights up so you can, you know, have a small rave scene in there and all these troopers are getting along. I'll have a couple of Valkyries join in, you know, got to give people something to dance for, right? A little social scene down there while they get ready to roll out onto the, uh, onto the Baffin Island uh, loading bays into submarines and whatever to go disperse themselves across the dystopic continent of America on my end state shelf. But yeah, uh, Techno Viper seems right at home with that pink neon. And yeah, I won't lie. My bed is not far from this exact spot and I do fall asleep to the, uh, the majestic lights of my hiss tank and it's, uh, as it times themselves out at night. So we'll just pan around here, have a little look. There's those Gatling guns again. Let's have a look. And yeah, they do fit the blast effects in the end. I really do like those. I need to get more of those, Aaron. Uh, but yeah, Firefly, I've got to track down his little detonator. And of course, Major Blood is a picture a picker, uh, <laughs> a pickup at Joe Fest that I still haven't done a review on. And he's one of my very favorites. Uh, I love this turret. But do, is he, do they need twin Gatling guns up there? I don't know if they do. So those are the Cobra displays as we have them, the three of them. We have the, the Arctic, we have the Mindbender display with uh, a little bit of a nod to my my openness to allow other lines like Warhammer 40k, Buzz Lightyear apparently, things like that uh, drop into the line. So we'll just end up this and have a look at the, uh, the next stuff as soon as it comes along.
that's enough shaky camera work for those shells. Let's get into Dreadnoughts for a minute, uh, because you guys love Zartan, I love Zartan, and I love my Dreadnoughts. Uh, so we have to go over to over another shelf, my nighttime shelf, uh, and this one's happening, say, on Wolf Island at a, a, a certain club somewhere, right? And it's a, it's an unknown club. It's a fight club. We're not supposed to talk about these fight clubs, but they exist. And so you can see Big Boa. He's been in. Uh, he's getting ready for his big fight in this uh, makeshift club, and he is, of course, going to be fighting Master Ken, one of my favorite YouTubers of of uh, Ameridojo who's downgraded everybody here to a white belt and rightly so croc master is fixated on a problem uh, we'll, we'll see what that is and of course copperhead is is irrelevant as i've ever allowed him but of course the band's playing no it's not cold slither they suck but this band is hostaged you know they are not playing with their will in fact their bassist he played a couple of notes wrong and broke a string and well i i see what croc master is seeing now the bassist has been punished by the band and kicked off because you know it's either he's stops playing or they all die so of course it's up to torch to stop fiona from you know maybe making it a total fatality and getting the authorities involved after all the guys kind of famous uh and then the rest of the dreadnoughts will just stand by well well zartan tries to bribe a range viper with a, a snake piece of a piece of a rattlesnake head for some reason and the girls grind zarana and heart Runter just dancing away and maybe that's what master ken's enjoying about that scene but Overall, it's just a party while Naga High plays a video game and Rob Zombie wishes he were anywhere else. You know, Slash is wishing. No, Slash is still better off without Axl Rose. But, uh, oh, there's your night effect. This is starting to feel like more of a Rob Zombie nightclub. So let's just put in some music and finish that up. I concede I don't have Python Patrol. What I do have is a lot of Crimson, uh, Crimson Guard. So let's go have a look at those. There's that flag y'all we're looking for. It's covering a mess right now. We'll go over to this other shelf. This is the extent of where my Python Patrol lays, which is if I get them, I'll form them up here. But there's my Serpentor and one of my extra Cobra Commanders. I don't know how many Cobra Commanders we all need, but as of tomorrow, I'll be getting forth as I too will be picking up that retro vac uh, Cobra Commander. And then I love that Cobra that comes with Serpentor. I just love the Serpentor kit entirely. And, you know, a couple of aquarium plants looks nice. But there's my uh, Crimson Guard uh, contingent with a little add of an Apex or yeah apex figure on there i thought he looked good in his red just as a little merc attached to them there so nothing overly impressive a few crimson uh guardsmen a bat and a uh, uh crimson alley viper very hard to get those around here these days and so uh rolling in you've heard me talk about ninja plans oh good the red one fell over i do have plans for ninja we've had some fortnite to there i do have some awesome ninja heads and some bodies i'm just getting the heads painted up at some point and then we'll throw them onto this shelf if there's room but yeah overall ninjas have a very small place in my army and they have a different kind of theme i like the crime syndicates but i like them i like them with blades but i also like them with weapons like mp5s as well i like the i like the more 
violent, uh, modern, adapted ninja concept, not the traditional ones, I guess it is. But overall, I like the feel and the vibe of the Joe Classified Ninja Selection. Uh, the Joe ones, you'll see them uh, when we get to the Joe shelf, but uh, they have their place in my... Uh, and my collection for sure. I definitely dig those alternate heads for the blue ninjas more than the uh, the standard ninja head. Nice little change. And yeah, the demon is more just a nod again to that 40k aspect. Uh, like, what is that demon afraid of? Well, I'm dropping names like Slanesh out there. And uh, I only know a few people that would know what the Slanesh influence would be. And uh, why that would be a corrupting power that might very well be the guiding light of my my Cobra and State uh, kind of shelf stories going on there and just a little bit of a party boy influence gone really, really dark. Anyways, that's it for the honorary mention shelves, the stuff I haven't done. I think it's time we moved on to some Joe stuff, don't you? So for the first of the Joe stuff, we'll start with Night Force. You've seen this before, this uh, Turtles background backdrop that I did, converted it into a, you know, a commandeered submarine pen. So we've got my nunchuck conversion for Night Force over there, hanging out with Jody Shooter, and, you know, my Crow logo up there, which flips over for the computer panel. Uh, Pale Peony, uh, Tunnel Rat, Deep Six, Cutter, Shockwave, uh, Free Fall, Wraith, Torpedo, Wolf Spider, uh, Short Fuse, and Falcone, and uh, Stalker, and Big Ben, and Don Marino, and another Wolf Spider partner kind of guy conversion I did. I think I called him Variable at the time. And then also we had the 60th Anniversary Diver up in the back uh, supporting uh, Torpedo in the background. Yeah, that Free Fall is one I haven't shown that much of. Same as Cutter, he was there. Uh, I think you guys have seen my Deep Six conversion of that toy before, but that's the Night Force shelf there. And uh, from there, I think we'll just roll right into Tiger Force. So we'll cut talking and just go to some news. <laughs> talk about them at some point so the, I have pretty much all the tiger force uh, I'm just waiting on a wreckage and the tiger paw and then I'll have them all and I've added a uh, big brawler in there and my dial tone uh, just for fun I changed up dial tones head but I've also added some ninja figures to this uh, Florida jungle scape you know Fei Long from the Jada series and then of course quick kick he'll stare at him going where have I seen you before oh that's right this morning when I brushed my teeth in the mirror uh, but you know I, I enjoy the ninja figures, but there is a lot for for my taste. However, uh, stash behind there, of course, we've got the lovely Jinx, we've got Kamakura, we've got uh, Akiko. There you can see my big brawler in the background, carting around an axe. Of course, that's an old gung-ho with a uh, with a dreadnought head that uh, Loki Wartooth provided me. And there's Nunchuck up there. So that's pretty much the ninjas folded in with uh, my Tiger Force selection. There you go.
So unlike most of the other shelves with the Tiger Force, I kind of wanted to pose them like they were doing it for an old photograph, like a glory shot, like the black and white photos and things like that from Vietnam. So anyways, we'll move into the next group of guys uh, in the Wolf Island headquarters, kind of where my, my Red Devil Company pit is and where things are trying to start transitioning with the old Joes, uh, the main Joel Waves is what you're going to see next. So I'll let the music play for the next uh, couple couple of shelves because it's just the the main Joe waves. brings us to the end state thing where the entire continent gets wiped out and I get to create my own characters for Joe based off the idea that Canada wouldn't just sit out of fight we would create Joes for you. So some of these will be Valiverse figs, some of these will be my own customs and some of them will be Joes folded in just to make them feel at home like Mutt here you know and uh, those Valiverse figs customized a little bit and thrown on horseback with some 60th anniversary and so I'm just going to show you some figs from an end state perspective kind of shelf and what I did with those figs and uh, I'll let the music play on because I really am getting tired of the sound of my own voice. 